give him I'm just some... being a caring, sensitive person. Sugar That's what cube. I get. Right, let's just get on with the video. Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee. I'm Robin Clevett. And we've got another Mathel tool here. Um, again, the guy came down, Jody, showed me the track saw, showed me the jigsaw. And I said, yeah, we'll have a look at that. We'll have a play with that at the same time. So forgive me if I'm not absolutely word perfect on this. When was I ever word perfect on anything? But here we are, let's set that oh. You know, Dylan, our cameraman, he loves an unboxing. That's nicely, nicely presented, isn't it? This is the sort of tool that I'd be quite happy never to take out of the box. It certainly looks shiny. It's like a famous car brand, bright red. Do you know what, mate? You can name names. Well, you know. Um, quite a weight. Quite a weight to Do that. you know what? It's a weight. and if Which is what you want for a jigsaw, especially if you, you know, you're relying you? on it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because they're all a bit vibrating, aren't they? And if you're buying it by the kilo, yeah, this good value is, for money. This is, no, it's the most expensive jigsaw on the is market. It? Yeah. Okay. So we've got to look at that in that context. Okay. And we'll try and play with it. We'll try and do something. This is a interesting little angle dangle thing. Is that for the rail? Yeah, you that's can use it. You can use it on the rail, okay. but, but the, the, the key... And it's also going to do that. That's, level over. that's what it does, because this on its own, no bevel. Yeah, that's There's the nothing. fixed one. That Fine. is just the fixed body on its own, obviously anti-scratch plate on the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So the advantage of this Pendulum. is, um, I use, incidentally, I use the Carvex, which is the Festool uh, tool. And it looks very similar. In fact, it's a sustainer box. They're all using sustainer boxes. It's, a no, it's noticeably lighter, I would say. Have a little play with that. Oh, blimey. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. A lot lighter. Ooh, yeah. But it's a good bit of kit. But immediately looking at this, which is something, let's have a little look. Does it go on the rail, Roger? Yeah, somewhere on the rail. It's, it's, got, to go, it's got to go so you can't, can't, can't cut through the rail. Oh, I see. Yeah? So, and actually, it doesn't go on that side. Okay. Enough. It sits on this side somewhere. Look, I told you I wasn't word perfect on it. Oh, there, there we go. I'm way off word perfect. Okay. All right. Well, so with, with the um, Carvex, you have to have a whole load more kit. It comes in a sustainer as well. And in here, you've got, for example, the one that will go on the rail here. Oh, okay. And that, that, that runs on a rail. So yeah, and the other thing is as well, what Roger's showing me there, that this will also do your beveled rips or your beveled cuts. The one for the Festool is another separate one as oh, well. Okay. It's a lovely bit of kit, don't get me wrong. Oh, all right. But it's... Um, so they're both working on off the same hymn sheet, really, aren't they? Germans, aren't they? Yeah. Do you reckon they, they I mean, talk to each other, don't they? they? They do. I mean, and I love this Festool Carvex because it, you can do this, you can do exterior, and you can do internal bevels as well. So how is that regarded in the industry, that Festool? Is that, is it, they, um, they did have a bit of a dog at one point, didn't they? There was a jigsaw they made yeah. which people weren't happy with, and they knew that. I would say it's value for money. They fessed up to it. I'd say it's value for money. Yeah, they fessed up to it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I've had the battery version of it, and um, there's a small wheel here, which is like, that's the guide for the blade, which keeps yeah. it nice and true. And then there's behind there, there's like a little wheel, which I think gives you the pendulum action. Yeah. And you should do that. Yeah. But my other one um, actually went sort of hexagonal, and I think my apprentice actually told me that I had set it up wrong. And um, I'm not surprised. He seems to know a lot more about tools than me. Um, I think I'm just too rushed all the time. So yeah, I mean that was that was my only complaint. But I did get it fixed, and it is working. But um, yeah, it's all right. I quite like cool. this tool. Yeah, so yeah. I'll be interested to see how that one performs. Power? Right. How much is power is it? Got? Well, and then again, look. If you could read that underneath, I can't <laughs> read it. But we're going to put that up on the screen because that's something I'm not sure of. Right. Yeah. So I can't tell you exactly what okay. size motor that's got in it. But what I would say, they're both body grips. Now, yeah. the thing about the body grip, a lot of people in the UK don't know about body grips, they don't like them, they use the, the, the D-handle, the D-handle, yeah. so the body grip's a different proposition. Now the body grip on the continent, our European brothers and friends, they use it upside down. They cut from the bottom of the surface. They do. And they kind of scroll around. So that means that their cut 
is down into the tool, so they're not getting that, what we get, which is the breakout. Breakout, The yes. splinter. So obviously we do a little splinter guard that goes yeah. in there. Well, we also have a down cut blade that you can use yes. as well, which yeah. is a little bit more tricky than it, because it doesn't like the pendulum action I was going to say, so they much. don't work on the pendulum, yeah. do they, but really? But I, I also do the upside down. A lot of kitchen fitters do it as well. Yeah. It's really nice to see the blade exactly where the work is, but yeah. you've got to set yourself up correctly for but, that. But it's a bit heavy for doing that, isn't Possibly, it? Possibly, yeah. That. How do you do it? Do you, when you do your upcut, is it like that or is it, are you using this or just that? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm underneath there basically, but sometimes, you know, you can use a couple of hands, yeah, but okay. I think but it's keeping like everything. It, I, keeping it up against a work surface is the thing that gets me. It is. Because you don't want it jumping yeah. at all, do but, you? I mean, I do, for example, if I'm scribing a, a panel up the side of a kitchen, up the wall, I would mark the panel. So I'm actually working near the edge. Oh, okay. And so I can, I can, you know, you can go all the way up. Your work's here yeah. and you can just go all the way up the edge like that. So it's, um, it's, yeah. very, it's not very often you get right underneath something and try to cut a letterbox out. Okay, so. I understand. Now, I'm going to test you on this. Just okay. have a look at that and see if you can spot what is different about this tool. Okay. Almost unique, I'd say. What is unique of this tool? One. Well, what? for one, there's no blade guide. That's it. It's exactly that. There's no So roller. there's just a piston coming up and down. You it might it not be one. called a piston, but it looks like a piston yeah. to me. There there's is, no blade guide. There is no roller at the back for holding the blade in. Now... That is a real departure, isn't it? You know, you think, why? That's would what they, Roger's talking about. There's none why of this would they affair want to here. Do that? Now, what they're telling me is that at Mathel, they have decided that that roller is anti productive. It produces heat. Right. It wears the blade faster because a hot blade is going to wear out faster than a cool blade. Right. Yeah. And that actually, if they clamp the blade firmly in what you're calling the piston there, yeah? Yep. And if it's in there and they've got a kind of side cam thing that goes into it that, that really wedges that blade yep. in there, if they do that, then they can eliminate the movement in the blade. Right. And therefore they don't need the roller guide. Okay. Now, uh, jury's out on that. We'll have to decide on that. But the other thing that they've done now this is really incredible. We're going to try and get a close up on this from the camera. If I hold it nice and steady. Well, it's twice the thickness. It's two blades. Ah. It's, and it's one blade welded, probably sonic welded to the other one. Right. Pricey. It's not going to be cheap. Everything, most expensive jigsaw in the world. Yeah, it's probably have, the most yeah. expensive blade. Who knows? But look at it. It's a piece of cheese. It's wedged. Yeah. It's thinner, I mean, it's, at, it's thinner at the back it's than really, it is at the back. It's really quite stiff as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can bend a jigsaw blade quite easily. But well, I quite like that. It's actually, it's like a V in section. So it's obviously thicker at the front. It's got a good set, like a handsaw. Yeah. And so, um, you know, my only thing is going to wobble like hell when it goes through. But, um, well, we'll try it. But, yeah. but what they reckon is that you can do keyhole with that, that you can turn that around like a scrolling blade. Oh, fantastic. Almost within. Yeah within its own circumference. So we're trying that, okay. see if it can turn on a sixpence or whatever the decimal equivalent Will Will is. their machine take any of the other blades? Yes. Or does it have yes. to say, we'll no. take other blades? Yeah, yeah, because that's the first thing I said, I said, come yeah. on, hang on a minute. Yeah. You, you're just going to do this. That, well, your blade you know, snaps and you can't borrow one. Can I borrow a jigsaw? Everybody's blade? tried that. So it will take a standard blade, All right. but it will also take this one, which has got this really strange little... Yeah, it's like a blade and a half. Dove, double thing on it, yeah. So. Anyway, that's their USP. That's what they're saying is the, the big deal with this saw. So all we can do really is give it a run. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of other features that I've missed on it, but that lack of roller guide and the fact that that means that that piston, again, we call it, we don't know the proper name for this thing here, but that piston, that thing that holds the blade, actually travels down a lot closer mm. to the worktop. Whatever, yeah. you're, whatever you're cutting, yeah, because... So you're going to use more of the blade, so effectively. So the, the travel, yeah, the travel is right up to the the last bit, yeah? That's so the, the plain so part do you want me to, should we try it with yeah, this? Yeah, go for it, yeah. Well, no, look, I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab a bit of worktop, all right? Oh, that's because a good that's idea. probably a good thing to Move use. Move this out of your way. And let's see how it performs. I know how this performs. I've done plenty of this. So I'll move this one out Roger's way there. I'm all cabled up. Am I unplugged? Yep. <clears throat> I like to be unplugged when I do this because nobody wants surprises. 
hate surprises. Do you know what my worst nightmare would be? Go on then, Sur tell me. A surprise party. Oh really? You know those Seriously, things where they yeah. just move you into a room and you go, and then everyone you know you've ever met in your life that you don't even like is there in a room and they'll go, yeah, but I surprise! Mean, I mean, you can't say that until you've had a surprise party. So, I mean, the thought of it for everyone must be pretty daunting. I'd tell my wife, never ever do that to me. Never do that, you know? But if she knows you that well, she'd probably we be down. She thinks we were in a restaurant one night and there was a guy in there and his wife said to the, the, the waiter, oh, it's my husband's birthday today. And it was my birthday as well. Oh, no. So he said, oh, have a drink on the house. And then my wife went, yeah, it's his birthday as well. <laughs> I went, don't say that. She said, what do you mean? You're going to get a free drink. So after that, every restaurant we go in now, she said to the waiter, it's his 65th birthday. <laughs> oh, have a drink on the house. Just Quite saying. clever. Quite yeah. clever. Pendulum, obviously. Yeah. Four um, settings. Yeah, I, five settings. If I'm doing scrolling, I tend not to use the pendulum. Am I right? Oh, I mean, it depends on the material. So let's see how this goes through. Are you going to be my clamp? You're if, gonna, you're I'll tell you what, it. I will hold it like that and you oh, can that's good. cut through it at 45 degrees. So I'll be full up, yeah? That's not bad, is it? That looks pretty square as well. That's quite impressive. And you consider how thick that blade is. Yeah, that's pretty epic. I can't it, get my little finger through there. It turned on a sixpence. Do you know what? That's not too bad, is it? No, it's I pretty I surprised myself yeah. because I've never used it before. Yeah. That was the first go. And what they're saying, you're, you're dead right. What they're saying about this blade is that it remains plumb. Mm. Yeah? Mm. I bet that's hot. Well, I'll tell you what's um, always a good test for oh, a jigsaw. I'll tell you what, what is oh, it is hot. It's fairly <laughs> hot. What's always a good test for a jigsaw is if you're going to go in, in at something which is not at 90 degrees. So let's give that a go. Yeah? Let's just, just yeah, take this on. corner off here. And when what we're looking for is just, I'm going to do it the, un, the foreign way as well. I'm going to come, okay. Roger said it's the foreign way. So I'm going to well, go underneath, gonna... see how clean the cut is as well. So I'm going to turn the machine on. I would say that like that is really square. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. Considering now, I went in at 45 degrees. You see, I prefer the old fashioned rigid blade to the bimetal blades. Right. I don't actually see, I know they'd snap. Yeah. But I can't see where these bimetal blades have, have got any real advantage. You know, we buy them. They start bending. Yeah. They move and then suddenly yeah. you cut, you're looking at it. I've cut sink worktops out before and then you can't get the clamps on because the thing's meandered so far out. Yeah. You know, you're following your top line. When you look at the bottom, yeah, exactly. it's all it's over it's the all place. Over. So I'm going by the cheap ones. I'll buy the faithful blades, yeah. which are the rigid, yeah. not by metal. Half the price. Yeah. I don't snap many mm. and they stay a lot more plumb oh, in the cut. That's interesting. So, but having said that, the way I do it is circular saw, plunge cut, and then just finish oh, off okay. with a jigsaw. Those days of running up all yeah. the way around. Yeah, exactly. Now I've got the track saw, I find it a lot easier to just run it absolutely yeah. precisely like that. Can you try something else for me, Roger? Something I do as a carpenter is sometimes I have to shape the end of a joist. Now, um, so oh, we're talking yeah. about a two inch thick timber, so an eight by two, for example. And, you know, the ideal thing out is pick this out and profile it. But in the end, I end up having to um, make a thing up for my router and actually uh, route them out to get them perfectly square and true. It'd be nice to see if this will scroll like it did through that chipboard. This is 40 mil thick. This is a bit of work surface. You know how hard that is. I'm going to give you a little bit of timber. Just cut me a shape in it and see me? how it, yeah, cut Why me a, you? because I just want to show you how easy it should be. Oh, okay. So you cut a bit of shape. Let's get you a piece. All right. Okay, here we go. Now this stuff, 
is rock hard. This is the end of a rafter from this roof. It's rock hard, it's been inside for ages. So this will be a fairly good test. I'll hold it for you. Okay, mate. Always clamp your work, not generally with a human, but I'll hold it for you. Yeah, if you've got a clamp, boy, then it makes sense to use them. If you haven't, you have to try and the mechanical I'm gonna draw. I'm just going to draw a squiggle yeah, on there, yeah, yeah. And, you've gotta, and you've got to follow the squiggle. Now, what am I doing? Is upside down? I'm um, not the you can do it however you want. The continental way or the but we've got top way. We're gonna, we've got this is my joist end, and we're going to have a nice bit of a profile sticking out there. It could be an eave like that. Imagine. Right there we go. Fill your boots. Let's do it this way, just because. Um, it's probably a bit quicker, yeah? I would say that that's the, probably the best jigsaw I've seen for doing a scroll. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, actually, mate, I'll tell you what, it's still a little bit. Yeah, but it's not bad considering, no. you know, this is, a, this is solid old stuff. It meandered stuff right down the line, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's well, pretty good, though. It's pretty good. Maybe right? I'm being harsh on myself. What would you do with that now? Would you put that on the bonfire or would you give it a sanding off? To be honest with you, if you're doing a, let's say you are doing a roof and the eave is shaped like this and it's a second story, effectively oh, yeah. that's, that's going to be perfect for that, providing yeah. they're all the same. Yeah. Um, but equally, if I was going to be doing this and it was really ornate carpentry work, I'd take the, I'd take the stock out almost off the line and I'd finish that with a really nice long ah. two flute router cutter and a jig. But I would remove quite a lot of the stock first because anyone who uses a router a lot through thick timbers, you know, you've got to keep going in several passes. And if you've got 60 of these to make, you want to be able to do them efficiently. And that is a tool for that. Um, I'm going to put this other blade in, Robin. Right, and give it, give a, it, a, give give it, it a go. You give it a go this time. All right. Because um, I was following the line as best I could. Yeah, I'm going to if, follow it again. Oh, you're going to do it? Oh, okay, all I'm right. I'm going to go the other way. Yeah, fine. You're a lot quicker than I am, but I didn't have my glasses on, so I was trying ah, desperately. It's a moustache. <laughs> That's nice. I'll take that it's home. It's pretty good, though. I mean, you can, see, take that home. you can see it's fairly parallel. So my, I mean, grandchildren, a... my grandchildren love that little bird. <laughs> That's a bird. Could we make a bird for them? Could we put a little. You can do, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or you can that. have a wing. Like, it's a bit big oh, for the body, bad, but. Um, yeah. 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 Do you know and what, though? That's not bad. You saw how quickly I ploughed through that. I mean, it's it's really quite good. I mean, it's pretty square. So that was using the ordinary blade? Yeah. That's not using the thick blade, isn't it? No. Do you want to just spin that round in there for me and see what the difference that makes? Oh, that's interesting. Doing a little curl ah, up. Ah, yeah, I reckon that. That, I reckon that might struggle. I'll do it the same way as you did yours. On the top. Nice, yeah, it? I mean that was actually, about as tight as you can go, but finishing just on an ordinary blade. That is that is nice actually. Isn't it? Yeah, and actually the it hasn't chipped out very much at all, considering I'm I'm not using a down cut mm. blade. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit of mod, that's a bit of modern art that is for you. That's a they person. They don't make their blades, by the way. Do you know that? No. There's very very few people that make their blades. I went to the factory in Switzerland, right. Scintilla or so Scintilla, where they make. The blades for almost every single jigsaw, jigsaw and recip saw in the world, and they're all just badged up. So, right. so that would be comparable to a lot of other blades on the market, yeah. like the Bosch and all yeah. the rest of it. So that's a good example of using yeah. their own blade or using a. Yeah, a what I'm saying blade. is that that is that other blade is their patented 
double welded yeah. job, you know, but this is an ordinary blade and there's nothing particularly special mm. about it. So that's not a bad effort, is it, for that? I like this. I think we're getting a bit artistic here, aren't we, really? We are. You know, it's starting to, starting to look good. Um, just a quickie, Roger. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that this standard base that comes on here has got the grooves. That must be for... The rail. The rail, okay. Yeah, yeah. We so it would go on the back, would it? We haven't done anything with the rail. Right. But the idea is you're not cutting... Excuse me one That's sec okay, you while carry I wreck on. everything. Um, you're not cutting on that rubber face. You can cut close to that rubber face, but quite honestly, why would you? You know? Yeah. You want to stay away from that because we're not talking anti-splinter. You will put an anti-splinter guard on that. Okay. And next time you see us, I'm going to be an expert at the Mifel jigsaw. All right. Well, we'll uh, hopefully it'll be with us long enough we, we can we can familiarise ourselves with it because otherwise that'll be knowledge we've gained for no end, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well we'll come back on that, but we've given you a, a brief overview if you like, or brief, it's not that brief is it, by the time we've both had a little chat about it, um, but gives you an idea, doesn't it? That's it. That's it. you just got to find the groove, once you find the groove, once you're in the groove you're in it, aren't you? You certainly are. Okay mate, Brilliant. it's great to see you. And, Thanks for uh, coming over. As nice I say, to see it you wasn't too. the smoothest presentation in the world, but if we spent another two days playing with that saw, tell you what, we'd be all right, wouldn't we? We, we certainly we'd will. And we will now it. play with it. So um, off yeah. camera, we're going to be using this for a few days, um, actually doing real life situations. And by then, we'll know exactly how good it is. And yeah. if we can sort of find some really good, unique propositions for this, we'll let you know. Yeah, but also if we use it on a few real jobs, yeah. then you can see if you come back to Skill Builder, Check out the other videos, you will see these tools being used in there, up to the point where they come and seize them. <laughs> I, can say, I say seize them because they're really going to have to try hard to get these back. Definitely. We're going to be out. Every time the courier comes, we're not in. Exactly. Cheers, Robin. Cheers, mate. Nice to nice see you. Nice to see you, you Roger. Cheers. Nice to see you soon. See you soon. Come back and see us again. Subscribe.